Copy. Uh, are you awake? Is everything alright? Mm. Uh, oh, the thunderstorm. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's pretty loud. It must be nearby. Oh, are you feeling nervous about it? Is that why you're awake? No, I'm not claiming that you are. <laughs> After all, you're my big, handsome werewolf boyfriend, aren't you? <laughs> hmm. You wouldn't be afraid of a little bit of thunder, would you now? <laughs> oh, oh, puppy. Uh, uh, I was only teasing you. I, I didn't mean to make you tear up like that. Uh, puppy, I, I could tell you were lying when you said you were okay. Hey, hey, come here. Come here into my arms. You don't have to act tough or big or anything like that around me, okay? Especially when it has to do with your feelings. I could tell that you were just trying to put on a brave face or about this whole thunder thing, but what if I couldn't? What if I couldn't tell? I'd have hated to fall back asleep and leave you to worry about the thunder on your own. Doesn't matter for what reason you're feeling nervous or afraid. I'm here to support you, okay? <laughs> you're such a good puppy. You deserve to express your feelings around me, okay? Come on, puppy. <laughs> Just rest your head in my chest and concentrate on the sound of my voice for a second. You have good hearing, so you should also be able to hear my heartbeat and feel my chest move in and out while I breathe. And I will strike your head just for you, alright? <laughs> it's okay, puppy. I can feel you. You're all tensed up and your breathing is really fast. It's alright. It's totally normal to have that reaction when there's something that's making you nervous. These are all very normal reactions to a stimulus. <laughs> You're doing a great job, puppy. talk to you about something. Oh, anything? Hmm. Just hearing the sound of my voice is going to calm you down a bit. <laughs> Alright, puppy. Anything to make you feel better? Hmm. What should I talk to you about? Oh, I know. Have I told you about my fountain pens yet? Yeah, the ones are right with most of the time. Uh, I mean, I don't handwrite much these days because, you know, I just type up my notes or use a stylus on a tablet, but any chance I do get to do handwriting, I always use my fountain pens. How did I get into fountain pens? 
Oh, well, when I was still in secondary school, my grandma gave me one of her old fountain pens, because obviously she wasn't using it anymore. But it wasn't really in a usable state, because she hadn't used it in so long, so I just kept it in a drawer. And so, when she passed on, I brought it out of its hiding place and tried to figure out how to use it. Uh, uh, thank you, puppy. Yeah, it's alright. About my grandma. It was nearly four years ago now, so I guess I'm over it, but I still miss her a lot, you know? Thanks, Poppy. Thanks for holding on to me tighter. But I am technically meant to be the one comforting you. So I'm just going to keep talking, alright? No need to worry about the thunderstorm outside. Oh, goodness. Just concentrate on the sound of my voice and my walk. Okay? Don't mind my yawns. <laughs> good boy. You're such a good boy. <laughs> oh. Pfft. Yeah. I know you're much warmer than me. Got higher body temperature and whatever. But I'm still helping you feel more warm and cozy anyway, right? <laughs> Come on. I'll give you some head pats while I talk. So, my grandma's fountain pen wasn't really in a condition that I could write with. So, I had to do a bunch of research to figure out what I actually needed to do in order f to figure out how to use it so that I could write. I found out that I could have paid like $200 to have someone else fix it, but the tools and materials themselves would have only costed $30, and if I wanted to buy a broken fountain pen to practice fixing, they, surprisingly enough, only cost like $15 a piece, because, well, they're broken. So, I was pretty set on learning how to fix fountain pens, but... Then I started Year 12, and, you know, Year 12 is really busy and difficult, and I still wanted to do my extracurriculars, so I ended up shelving the project. I did all the research, brought some, not all of the materials, but her fountain pen is still sitting there. Broken. Though, I should say that the silver lining at least is that it's now sitting in a glass case. I managed to clean it up with some of the materials that I brought, so it's nice and shiny like it would have been 60 years ago when she first bought it. Yeah, it's 60 years old. She kept the box and it had the manufacturer's date on it. I don't think she actually remembered when she bought it, though. <laughs> Fountain pens really do last a long time. It's why people used to buy them as a lifelong investment. In like the 1800s and stuff, they'd just buy the one fountain pen and use it for a very long time. Oh, like, did you know the word for fountain pen in Japanese, manenhitsu? literally means a 10,000 year pen. It's because they're built to last for so long. <laughs> okay, maybe not 10,000 years exactly, but in Japanese that's just an expression for a very long time. But they really are built to last. Oh, and the second thing, though, is that she got me into fountain pens. Without her realizing it, I guess. While doing research on vintage pen restoration, I came across modern fountain pens for sale. Yeah, they still make and sell them. They're still really popular in places like Germany and Japan. 
I'm not sure specifically why, but brands like Pilot and Lamy make really good fountain pens that you can buy online or in some stationery stores. There was this really unique pen made by Lamy, this German company. It's called the Lamy Safari. This store was selling a limited edition version of this Lamy Safari. It's this beautifully deep purple color. It's called Dark Lilac, I believe. When I saw it, it was just so stunning. I had to buy it. It only came with the one blue ink cartridge, but you could also buy this equally magnificent ink bottle. And these ink bottles have a lot of ink, so they can last you a really long time. Only issue was the Lamy Safari and the ink bottle together, plus a converter, which is what you need to actually put the ink in the pen, were $80. I thought about my grandmother's pen, which, realistically, I wasn't going to be able to restore myself. So I bit the bullet and bought the Lamy Safari Dark Lilac. I used it in place of my grandmother's fountain pen, and I haven't regretted it since. <laughs> I've bought a lot more fountain pens and ink since then. I don't know if you've seen that wall of ink up in my room, but those are all fountain pen inks. <laughs> I've definitely spent way too much money on them. <laughs> hey, I'm responsible with my money, I promise. I haven't bought a fountain pen in like two years since I started uni. <laughs> Don't tease me like that, puppy. <laughs> Either way, the income I get from live streaming has not gone into fountain pens. Thank you very much, dear werewolf. <laughs> I'm serious when I say that the money I get goes towards my living expenses. And of course, the dates of my precious werewolf boyfriend. <laughs> I know how tiring and stressful life can get, Poppy. That's why I'm here to support you, baby boy. <laughs> yeah, I know you like being called that. Don't lie to me. <laughs> Even if it's just putting aside some time to get some bubble tea or snuggling inside with a movie and some snacks. I always like to make sure there's at least something I can do for you. Because I always feel so much better in the process. And I like to think you feel better as well. I know how busy and tired you get studying magic behind the scenes at the University of Kahalan. So, any little bit that I can do for you, I'm going to make sure that I can help you out in any way that I can. I just want to be a good boyfriend for you. <laughs> Come here. But, puppy. That also means you've got to be honest with me about your feelings. If you're feeling a bit nervous or a bit scared, that's totally fine. I just want you to know that you don't always have to put on a tough act for me, puppy. <laughs> better? Oh, I'm glad. I really am. I don't know if the thunder is quite going to go away so soon, but I can see those big puppy eyes struggling to stay open. 
<laughs> Come on, pup. It's time for you to fall asleep now. Be a good boy for me and close your eyes and wake up tomorrow well rested and ready to tackle the day. Hey there, thank you so much for listening to this video. I'd like to give a huge shout out to my patrons, especially my Pack Alpha and my Avatar patrons for supporting me and helping me make these videos. The featured Pack Alpha for this episode today is Wolfgar, and of course a huge thank you to my Avatar patron, The Bybred. If you'd like to support me in creating ASMR content and helping me get through med school, aha! <laughs> Um, as well as get a bunch of awesome bonuses like uh, age restricted audios um, and early access to my videos, be sure to check out my Patreon links below. I also have a Ko-Fi if you'd like to make a one-off donation that way. Thanks again so much for listening to this video and I hope you have a wonderful day or night or afternoon wherever you are. <laughs> And if you've made it all the way to the end of this video, or if you read all the way to the end of the description, comment a four-leaf clover emoji in the comments so I know that you're a real OG. <laughs> I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.